Hey, what's up everybody? I'm out here in Yosemite um, at my regular campsite over here by Half Dome. Yesterday I went up the cables. It was amazing. If you haven't seen that on my channel, check it out. I made a video of when I went up the cables a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to be telling you what's in my pack, all the gear that I've been using for this summer. The last five trips I've been out here in Yosemite since the end of May. I'm just going to tell you everything I got in my pack and give you some highlights. So let's get into it. First, starting with the big three. The tent that I have been using is a Slingfin Portal 2. It is relatively lightweight compared to other tents that are similar to it. I've kind of upgraded it actually with some more thick poles that they offer on their website. It's been really bomber. Last night in this particular spot was not so good. I was actually getting some serious torrential downpour and hail for a little bit. And while that was happening, because of this hard packed ground, I was getting some back splatter up and under the fly a little bit. I don't know if you can see that at all, but some dirt that's been splashing up there. So I did get a little spray up inside the tent. I think if I had a different tent site, maybe I wouldn't have as much of an issue with that. But generally speaking, it's not a huge problem. Uh, that's only the second time that I've caught rain in this entire summer, once in June and then once during this trip. Uh, otherwise, mostly I use it like this without the fly on. And I really like that because I get of course, good airflow and can see out across everything. So moving on to pack. This is the Arc Zip Ultra. It's the Ultra Fabric. I actually did a review on this as well on my channel, in addition to the tent. Um, take a look on my channel for a more detailed review, but it's been holding up really pretty well. I've got the add-on, some add-ons here, like the side pouches, as well as some uh, shoulder straps here. I also use the Peak Clip when I need to carry my camera with me, and that works really pretty well. Unfortunately, I did drop one of my dry bags that's kind of like this that I use to cover up my camera while I'm hiking while it's on this peak clip. So as I'm hiking out, I might struggle a little bit uh, if it starts to rain again. I've got an extra one gallon Ziploc bag. I'll have to tuck the camera away if it starts to rain uh, hard. So unfortunately, I did drop something along the way. Maybe I'll find it on the way back to the van. Um, in terms of how this pack has been holding up, it's been doing really pretty well. I've actually done two things to modify it, or one thing to modify it. This crossbar across the center here, it just pops out. If you're putting too much load in there and as you pick it up, it causes this part to kind of buckle. And so what I've done is I basically have put some Luco tape right here around three different places that are going to basically just hold it into the pack and that has helped to keep, prevent that little bar from coming out. The other thing was back in June, I actually got a hole in the pack right here and uh, I did that while setting it down on granite and it wasn't necessarily on a sharp piece of granite, but of course, when you look at granite, sometimes there's little needle sized pokers that are on there and I think that's what happened. Basically, I got two little holes in there, so I put a two inch square piece of tenacious tape on there and that has really held up. If I was able to do it over again, I might actually go with the all black version of this, which has more durable fabric. It's what they use on the bottom here instead of this gray and maybe the pack would be not having holes in it right now. Another thing that I keep on my pack at all times is the Garmin InReach Mini. This is the original one. I use it in the tracking mode and I like to let family and friends know where I'm at. A lot of my trips that I do out here are solo. So I wanna make them feel comfortable that I'm out here and that if I needed help, I would be able to reach out to press the SOS button or something like that. And I also use a website called Spotwalla, which enables me to create different uh, types of maps and share out those maps to people so that I don't have to give them the actual Garmin InReach website. And what the Spotwalla site does is it actually creates these really nice maps that you can kind of refer back to. Uh, it just displays a lot more information on there. So moving on to sleep system. Right here, I've got the Enlightened Equipment. This is a um, Revelation quilt. I really like quilts. I just like the versatility of being able to use it like a blanket. I like to roll around a lot. I'm definitely a side sleeper. and So this works really well for me for that reason. I was at the Outdoor Gear Retailer Show and I was talking to the CEO at the Enlightened Equipment booth. And I mentioned that my 
quilt is from 2017 and we talked about the fill weights and the differences in the fill weights since 2017 and now and he told me that they've actually increased the fill weight by about 30 percent in that time and now everything that we sell is 30 percent over stuff ah, okay because so right now, it definitely says 20F on this label here. Somewhere around here, there's a label that says that. But I think it's more like a 35F. My 0F, that's the same year purchase as this. I also think that one's about a 15F. Now, this is also this has done pretty well for me all summer long. I did actually feel kind of cold early in May when I was out here and I was camping on snow. So I did a little bit of an upgrade with my sleeping pad. And I went and got the Thermarest X-Therm, uh, I have been using the Uberlite, which is obviously very lightweight, but I wanted something that was just gonna keep me a little bit warmer, and I've had the X-Therm in the past, and I just could pull those out of a bin at home and use them, but the ones I have have slow leaks in them, and also this new one, in addition to not leaking, basically this wing-style fill attachment here that just fills it up much faster, deflates much faster, and uh, it's also a an half an inch thicker. I also have got the, uh, this is the Nemo uh, switchback. This is the short version. I don't think you really need the long version because typically I'm just putting this under my pad. I also use it sometimes just to sit on and lay on or just put gear on when I'm packing up and things like that. The other thing I bring with me all the time is uh, Z-Seat. And this is multifunction. I, of course, can use it to sit on a log, sit on my bear can. I also use it to kneel on inside my tent when I'm getting in and out, when I need to change socks on the trail and I'm standing in or needing to do that in an area that's wet or dirty. I use this to keep my feet from getting sand and crap on them. There's just a whole bunch of things that you could use it for, like a windscreen or something like that. It's virtually unlimited set of things, possible things you could use this for. So this has definitely been my go-to for seating for roughly the last five or six years. So one other thing that I've started to bring with me on other trips and also on this trip is the Helonix Chair Zero. I actually bought a whole bunch of Helonix chairs as well as the REI Flex Light. And when I was out here two weeks ago with family, we all had our own chairs, and as part of that, I actually had each one of them do a test side by side with all of the different chairs. That one in the middle. The middle one. Yep. I'd say larger one. Well, if I had sticks, the first one, or the rest, the large one. Or the large one, okay. And everybody kind of universally agreed that the chair, this chair zero, this is the large version, was actually the most comfortable. Now it's five ounces heavier than the regular chair zero, but it has significantly better uh, support, I think, because the fact is they're, the bars that are on the base here are just thicker. They're a little bit thicker. It's also three inches wider, so it doesn't have kind of that same cupping you in feeling when you sit on it. It's just very comfortable. It doesn't have a squishy feeling either. And so this is the chair that I will be using anytime I need to bring a chair with me on a backpacking trip. I brought it with me on this trip, was kind of maybe initially regretting it on the first day because it was, you know, uh, kind of feeling heavy from where I hiked at because I brought a whole bunch of extra stuff to make this video. But uh, yesterday when it was really sunny, instead of laying in my tent in, the in an area where there's no shade, it would have been just really hot. I was able to sit kind of over there underneath a tree and just be out of the, out of the sun and sitting comfortably. I wouldn't have necessarily been as comfortable sitting for a long time on this because over there, there just isn't a, a nice rock and sitting on top of it, on top of your bear can just isn't, isn't that great. So this will be going with me on certain trips that are maybe shorter or trips that I'm gonna go on with other people where I'm gonna be sitting around a campfire or something like that. Otherwise on longer trips where I'm going fast and light and don't anticipate doing a lot of sitting outside of my tent, this is what I'll be using just to save weight and not have something that I maybe won't use that often on a trip. Now let's talk about cook system. This is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. And what I've got on here is a windscreen from a company called Flat Cat Gear. I wanted to have, honestly, something that would be like wind protected, like some of those other uh, all-in-one systems that have a lot of wind protection built into them.
but I didn't want to go with an all-in-one system because I like the flexibility of being able to use my own pot, you know, not something that has so many pieces and parts that are all tied together. So this has worked really well for me. It definitely helps in terms of minimizing fuel consumption. The pot that I have here is a vault can. It's a one liter. It also is able to nest everything that I have here very easily. These pieces come off and they nest in there. Also, I'm using this pot stand or this, uh, I guess it's a pot stand or a, just a fuel holder. This, is, this works really well because these small fuel canisters, sometimes where you're at is rocky or just not great because it might be muddy or something like that. And I don't wanna get my uh, thing all dirty or just have it tip over when I'm boiling water. And so this is relatively lightweight and it also nests inside of that pot. Another thing, I oh, forgot here, pillow, all important. This is the Sea to Summit. I've tried a couple other pillows. I bought them for my REI and just didn't like the way they felt. And so I've continued to use this. It, this one has actually held up pretty well. I've had other ones that have piled up on the front here, but this one is not doing that. So I'm just gonna continue to use it until it conks out on me. Okay, water filtration. Water filtration, I've got the B-Freeze. Uh, I typically bring two along just because of past experience where I've had a water filter fail on me. Now I've been using these particular filters now since end of May, early June, and they are definitely slowing down on this trip when I first started trying to use this particular one. Had to really force it through there. Now as the bottom got wet and I uh, also cleaned it off, it is working fine, so it's good enough. But another issue happened on this one with the bag. This bag is less than a year old. And as I was squeezing the bag, there was a little pinhole that was just squirting water back out at me. So unfortunately the bag that I, my backup bag has actually failed. The water source for where I'm camped at is maybe a quarter mile up that way. And would have been really nice to have this. Fortunately, I did bring a 0.5 Nalgene to be able to make hot chocolate. So I was able to get about 1.5 liters when I needed to go up half dome yesterday and so I wasn't dehydrated. A few other things I've got here, uh, hot, hot chocolate. I don't drink coffee anymore, but sometimes I like to drink hot chocolate. So I brought this to be able to shake those up. Uh, I've also got this, a uh, nah, kind of a koozie thing for reheating my backpacker meals. Uh, bear can, this is the BV450. All right, let's talk about clothes. Uh, I bring two hats. I usually wear this style of hat when it's really sunny, just to keep the sun off of my back, neck and ears. It makes me feel a little bit cooler. I also bring a baseball cap that's adjustable because when it's windy, this hat just starts flopping around and it, I mean, it becomes ineffective at that point. Other things that I uh, use during the day when I'm hiking is I've got some sun gloves and these I got on Amazon. They're white, they're very thin, and they allow air to breathe through. They also have a touch finger, which makes it easy to use your phone if you need to while you're hiking. Uh, a buff, this just helps for wiping sweat off my face or wearing around my neck if it's windy. I also have kind of a uh, little handkerchief that is tucked into my pack to be able to blow my nose or things like that when I'm hiking. And then for when I'm at camp, I have some cheap leather gloves that I got from Ace. These are goatskin ones and they feel really nice when I'm wearing them. And I use these for handling my pot when I'm putting it on and off of the stove. I also use it for doing things like pushing in stakes or pulling out stakes, lifting up rocks and stuff like that so that my hands just don't get all destroyed. Just keeps my fingertips in better shape at the end and have less issues with cuts or things like that. Uh, puffy, this is an REI down puffy. It's several years old. I've also got a new jacket here from Mont Bell. One of my viewers on the channel actually suggested that I take a look at this after I had done a previous gearless video. The things that I really like about this so far is the pit zips, being able to unzip those uh, and be able to just hike without having, or with more breathability has really helped me. Honestly, it's not that much of an issue out here in Yosemite in terms of the rain, but today they're actually forecasting rain. So as I'm hiking back out, I may need to put this on. Another thing that I typically carry with me when there's any sort of rain in the forecast would be a sun umbrella. 
I unfortunately forgot that in the van. Another thing that I always have with me anytime I go hiking, Patagonia Houdini Air is really lightweight and breathable and it's bug proof and it just keeps me a little bit warmer. I love this jacket. All right, let's talk about hiking clothes. This is basically what I've been hiking in for the last three trips out here. Have actually been trying different sun hoodies and ultimately I've come to really love this shirt from Jolly Gear and I think it's now gonna be my go-to shirt anytime I'm backpacking or hiking. It's just really comfortable and breathable compared to some of the other sun hoodies that I've been wearing that while they do breathe, seem to just heat my body up a little bit too much. Some of the things that I like about this is, and I never would have expected that I like to have a button down, but I've actually now come to the conclusion that I really like having a button down. I actually do button this down, at least two buttons typically when I'm hiking. And then if I'm really hot, I can even button it down like a third one. And that just helps to get air moving out of your shirt and help to keep your torso a little bit cooler. Also, the sleeves have just this kind of uh, loose fitting feeling, which is wispy or something like that which helps to i think help keep the air moving within there this is a size medium i'm not that big of a dude but it just fits me really well in terms of its length and then also on the back uh, there is a hood which of, of course is important for a sun hoodie to have if you're somebody with a ponytail uh, it's also got a little hole in the back there and some adjusters to be able to tighten it down if you want to actually make it tight um, the other thing that I've also noticed about this hoodie, now, uh, last time I was out here, we were up in Tuolumne area and it was super buggy up there. And as we hiked this way, it got better. There aren't really many bugs over in this area, but um, I got bug bites when I was hiking in yesterday on my legs. But again, also the last trip on this, in this trip, no bug bites on my upper body. I think this might be bug proof. I'm not exactly positive, but I think it's a woven fabric and I've seen bugs land on my shirt and I just have literally gotten zero bug bites on my upper body where I've gotten some on my lower or even on my hands or head or whatever, just not on my upper body here with the shirt. So I would definitely say that this seems to have bug proof properties. But another thing that I've done uh, for this season after my tick uh, adventure back in April, I've actually been treating all my clothing with permethrin. I sent some of my clothing, like my shorts and some of these other things, to uh, Insect Shield to have them professionally treated. And then some of these other things that I've gotten later, like this shirt, I've actually just been spraying with permethrin at home. That does, I think, help a little bit with mosquitoes. When they land on there, they're basically gonna, it's gonna kill that mosquito. But things like ticks or other crawly bugs, I'm not having issues with them out here in Yosemite, but I just have that peace of mind um, and I'm not just, I'm not getting any bug bites as, as many bug bites with that uh, treatment on. So definitely would highly recommend permethrin treating all your clothing. If you're going anywhere with bugs or ticks, um, have some smart wool pants that I wear over these three quarter inch length Nike dry fit, uh, leggings have tried some other leggings that were Merino and they just felt like they were heating me up too much. So these Nike ones have worked pretty well. I also wear the Njiji toe socks underneath my darn tufts, and um, those help with preventing blisters on my toes or on my heels. And I also wear the Dirty Girl gaiters. I've been wearing these Lone Peak 7s for this entire season. They've worked really well. Uh, and then for watch, I have the Garmin Fenix. I'm usually wearing these pretty much anytime it's sunny out or they're sitting on top of my hat and I'm putting them on and off. Um, on my pack, I do have a hard style case that I can put these in to keep them from getting smushed. Glasses are really important to me, so I don't want anything bad to happen to them. Other clothing items, my sleep clothes. I also do have a second set of hiking socks. Some of my other stuff that I have here Basically have a toiletry kit, got things like little flossers. Uh, this is my first aid kit. Got some rubber gloves, triple antibiotic, uh, tenacious tape, and then some band-aids in there. Uh, Luco tape, some twine or some line here. This I usually use to hang my, my quilt up to dry it out or things like that, or my clothing. This could also be used as replacement shoelaces or patching up your gear. Sometimes lines on my tent, they'll get uh, cut by a rock and so I need to replace a line out in the field. So it's really just useful to have some line out there in the field with you. 
Uh, another little baggie in here that I've got, and all these little bags are just meant to keep stuff from getting lost. Um, but in here I've got just other little toiletry stuff. I've got a lighter, I've got um, lip balm, I've got Vaseline. There's actually two lighters in there because you never know in an emergency if one stops working. And then I've got my little Victorionix uh, tiny knife and that helps for cutting the Luco tape is usually the only thing I ever use that knife for. I also have uh, some hand sanitizer just a little squeeze bottle and then some wet ones. Inside my electronics case here, I've got a large battery. This trip I brought a 2600 anchor. Might have been overkill. I've still got two lights left on it, so I'm about halfway left on that on this trip. Um, have a little light here from Night Eyes. This is great because it swivels. It's also rechargeable. Contingent of cables, things like my watch um, and other things. They have a variety of different things. I need a USB, a micro USB, a USB-C and so forth. Uh, rechargeable headlamp. This is a black diamond. I forget, the, I think it's a respot or a spot, but it's rechargeable. And the rechargeable batteries in here are seven years old and they are still going strong. I'm reluctant to replace this because the newer ones have a different style for the flood versus the beam. And this has a single beam and then it has two lights for the flood. The other ones that are out now don't have two lights and I don't know that they're gonna flood as much. It has a red light and I'm just, again, I'm reluctant to replace it because I don't have any real complaints with it. Okay, this is the tiny pump. It's a, the, ver the version two, it's a, uh, it's a pump or a pad inflator, and it comes with a bunch of different um, <clears throat> ends. So if you have different style pump, or sorry, different style pads, it can connect to many different ones. You can also just use it for starting a fire, so just blowing air out of it. It also has a light built into it. And when I was hiking up on Friday, it was actually in the dark for the last two miles, and I was wearing my headlamp to be able to have the spot beam pointed out far. And then I clipped this to my pack to be able to just illuminate the ground in front of me. And that just helped to be able to not only be able to see out, but also see what's in front of me. So it's got a lot of um, multi-usability. Also being charge uh, rechargeable is really handy. I also have another dry bag here with just camera stuff. Things like this little thing that you can use to blow air onto a lens to clean crap off of the lens other, uh, essentially other camera cleaning stuff or things like that. There's a little brush thing uh, for cleaning off the lens, things like wipes that I need for the camera, extra batteries for cameras. This one is for my uh, Insta360 batteries. And then uh, I also carry along a spare battery for my large camera. And then some extra memory cards. It's handy to just be able to pop a fresh battery in and then not have to worry about using this to recharge it. One last thing here that I have inside my uh, camera accessories is this phone clip that goes into a tripod mount. Now it has the screw in mount as well as the Arca style bottom base. So it goes into my nice tripods that I have. I've actually used plastic ones in the past and the last one that I had actually broke after many years. So I went and bought a metal one. This one is from Ulanzi. It's really handy for putting your phone on a tripod, taking photos or time lapses, but it's also handy for when I'm in the tent. I use my little tripod inside the tent to be able to watch movies. This one being metal, I think it's just gonna last me forever. All right, uh, last piece of gear that I'm gonna talk about is actually uh, the camera that I've been using. It's an uh, Insta360 X3. And I also have this little tripod, talk about that real quick. It's a carbon fiber tripod. Smaller ones, even if you're using a phone on them, they'll just tip over if you're in somewhere where you need to get a goofy angle. So I can get all sorts of different angles with this. And it is heavy enough that if it's really blowing or things like that, that it is gonna keep it from tipping over. Also, when I have this fully extended, you need to have a serious tripod to keep that from tipping over. So it really works well for the Insta360. There's times where I set it up and I use it to take pictures or video of myself, like up on Half Dome yesterday. I got some really 
nice video and pictures that I wouldn't have been able to do without having a tripod. But this Insta360 is really slick. And uh, I've been somebody who has owned a, a, a GoPro in the past and I didn't really feel like it was that useful for me. Whereas this Insta360 X3 I think is super useful. The specific reason is with this 360 camera, unlike a GoPro where you're just pointing in one direction and oftentimes have limited view, even with a large viewing angle on a GoPro, you're just not gonna be able to get all the shots without having to spend a lot of time framing them up. And because the 360 camera is just filming in all directions, well, I just generally need to get it onto the tripod or hold it in the right place where I think I'm getting that in the frame. And what I can do then is once I get home, I basically am able to reframe that inside the software, either on my phone or on my desktop computer to be able to get the exact viewing angle that I want. I can also pan and move around so it helps to kind of create different effects of motion. Um, and then there are also other features just beyond just being able to take video. You can also do things like time lapses when you're using the standard modes. It does a 5.7K video. When you're doing time lapse because it's not needing to do image stabilization, well, it devotes more pixels for that, so it's an 8K time lapse. You can also do something called time shift, which is basically a video time lapse, and that creates this cool motion blur effect. Uh, having this wide angle lens on here is also really great for taking photos. There are situations where I want to be able to get <clears throat> a lot of the area around me, of course, like where I'm at right now. And in order to do that with another camera that has maybe a 16 millimeter lens on it, I need to have it far enough away from me that I can be in that view, but then also capture some of it around me. This is just a much wider angle lens. So if I'm standing right here, this lens is actually gonna have my face in it just perfectly. And then it's also gonna capture a lot of that area around me. So it's able to take these really nice photos in addition to video. And I probably am, what I would consider an amateur in terms of creating cool videos. You can do all sorts of neat tricks like taking your video and making it go up and down and zooming in and out and all sorts of infinite stuff. There's a whole ton of YouTube videos out on the internet that will tell you how to make quote unquote viral videos with something like this because of all of the effects and different things that you can do with cutting and jumping around inside the software. But I bring it with me on every trip Okay, that's everything in my pack. I think I went through everything in the tent and showed you everything. If I forgot anything, I'll put it up on the screen and let you know what it was. If you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comment section. I would love to answer your questions. And if you got use out of this video, you enjoyed it, hit that like and subscribe button. It definitely helps me out. And as always, happy trails. Thanks for watching.